Everybody dies, don't they? Everybody so come back, don't they? Isn't that so? You tried to get into the locked drawer so? today, didn't you? you tried How do the dead come back, Mother? Today, What's the secret of it? The Listeners by Walter de la Mer. Is there anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor, and a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveller's head, and he smote upon the door again a second time. Is there anybody there? he said. But no one descended to the traveller. No head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his grey eyes where he stood perplexed and still, but only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house, then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight, to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call, and he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky, for he suddenly smote on the door, even louder, and lifted his head. Tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Aye, they heard his foot upon the stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backward, when the plunging hoofs were gone. A Haunted House by Virginia Woolf, published in London in 1921. Whatever hour you woke there was a door shutting. From room to room they went, hand in hand, lifting here, opening there, making sure, a ghostly couple. Here we left it, she said, and he added, Oh, but here too. It's upstairs, she murmured, and in the garden, he whispered, quietly, they said, or we shall wake them. But it wasn't that you woke us. Oh, no. They're looking for it. They're drawing the curtain, one might say, and so read on a page or two. Now they found it, one would be certain, stopping the pencil on the margin. And then, tired of reading, one might rise and see for oneself, the house all empty, the doors standing open, only the wood pigeons bubbling with content and the hum of the threshing machine sounding from the farm. What did I come in here for? What did I want to find? My hands were empty. Perhaps it's upstairs, then. The apples were in the loft, and so down again the garden still as ever only the book had slipped into the grass. But they had found it in the drawing-room. Not that one could ever see them. The window-panes reflected apples, reflected roses. All the leaves were green in the glass. If they moved in the drawing-room, the apple only turned its yellow side. Yet, the moment after, if the door was opened, spread about the floor, hung upon the walls, pendant from the ceiling. What? My hands were empty. The shadow of a thrush crossed the carpet. From the deepest wells of silence the wood pigeon drew its bubble of sound. Safe, safe, safe! The pulse of the house beat softly. The treasure buried, the room. The pulse stopped short. Oh, was that the buried treasure? A moment later the light had faded, out in the garden then. But the trees spun darkness for a wandering beam of sun, so fine, so rare, coolly sunk beneath the surface the beam I sought always burnt behind the glass. Death was the glass, death was between us, coming to the woman first hundreds of years ago, leaving the house, sealing all the windows. The rooms were darkened. He left it, left her, went north, went east, saw the stars turned in the southern sky, sought the house, found it dropped beneath the downs. Safe, 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 the pulse of the house beat gladly. The treasure yours, the wind roars up the avenue, trees stoop and bend this way and that, moonbeams splash and spill wildly in the rain, but the beam of the lamp falls straight from the window, the candle burns stiff and still. Wandering through the house, opening the windows, whispering not to wake us, the ghostly couple seek their joy. Here we slept, she says, and he adds, kisses without number. Waking in the morning, silver between the trees, upstairs, in the garden, when summer came, in winter snow time, the doors go shutting far in the distance, gently knocking like the pulse of a heart. Nearer they come, cease at the doorway, the wind falls, the rain slides silver down the glass, our eyes darken, 
We hear no steps beside us, we see no lady spread her ghostly cloak, his hands shield the lantern. Look, he breathes, sound asleep, love upon their lips. Stooping, holding their silver lamp above us, long they look and deeply, long they pause, the wind drives straightly, the flame stoops slightly. Wild beams of moonlight cross both floor and wall, and meeting, stain the faces bent, the faces pondering, the faces that search the sleepers and seek their hidden joy. Safe, 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 the heart of the house beats proudly. Long years, he sighs, again you found me. Here, she murmurs, sleeping, in the garden reading, laughing, rolling apples in the loft, here we left our treasure. Stooping, their light lifts the lids upon my eyes. Safe, 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 the pulse of the house beats wildly. Waking, I cry, oh, is this your buried treasure, the light in the heart? If you like that story, consider supporting me as a patron. That way you help me make more stories for you and get access to a patrons-only library of stories. Lots more hours for you to listen to. A listener to the podcast recently contacted me and uh, brought to my attention um, voice cloning. I, I was aware of it before. I had a subscription to Descript, which is um, a podcast editing uh, piece of software, which was good. I'm not knocking it, but the, um, the what I found was I was using it to use voice to text, and it was just really pretty inaccurate, like most people's. Anyway, uh, it also did voice cloning, and it cloned my voice, but um, you had to pay. Uh, you only got a thousand words, so I used more than a thousand words. And every time I spoke, it, it replaced my voice with jibber jabber. So it looked stupid. And it was quite a lot of money. And I, th I didn't really see the application in doing it. And then recently, just the other day, a listener to the podcast had said to me, you, you know, this AI stuff is really going on a pace. And I was aware of that because I've actually just got a subscription to Mid Journey, which is the AI art generator. And we can talk about this, you know. But um, and, and I had an artist saying to me, don't use AI uh, images, F fair play, because they are gen they're trained on like billions and billions of artists work and the artists themselves are not credited. I mean, podcasters, just as my little gripe, podcasters aren't credited. Spotify and Apple and people use our stuff and don't pay a penny for it, you know, um, and they sell it to you, you know, but um, but and oh, they sell advertising via it. Um, YouTube, however, is wonderful and does give us some part of that back. Anyway, um, yeah, so I understand why you would say they put artists out of work. But in a sense, I think it's similar to when the camera came. When the camera was invented, a lot of artists said, well, you know, that's us finished now. And in fact, art still exists. And, and, it, and, it, uh, and in fact, there's, there's um, a whole school of using the AI the craft is in getting the prompts right. And then, of course, we've had chat GPT, which is the equivalent for writers. Chat GPT writes fantastic things with two provisos. One, if you ask it to do anything factual, it has a tendency to make things up. So it, I remember there was this lawyer saying, oh, you know, somebody said the we can use this AI now to generate legal pleas and it can search databases and it can bring out and it can be wonderful and it'll beat everybody. So they did this and this, this AI, this wonderful proposal, whatever you do, submission, and it, um, it, it, and it cited some legal cases, some actual cases from, say, New York in 1996 very convincingly put the argument together. The only problem was those cases had never existed. So AI w will make things up and it, it doesn't know the difference between truth and fact. How could it? You know, how could it? Uh, but it doesn't. And the other thing it does, if you ask it to write something, it, it's competent, but it's very dull. <laughs> its style is very dull and it, and it hedges itself around with provisors and caveats. But please remember too, you know, because this is the, way, the world we live in, everybody, we have to make everybody safe. So uh, AI does this as well. So, you know, uh, I even tried generating some music, which was, again, competent, but very dull. So I, there's no way we can turn our back on this. This is not going to go away. It's like the internet is not going to go away. And AI is AI art, AI writing, AI music. They're not going to go away. And I think the creators and artists have to um, 
there's nothing wrong with being an artisan and making things yourself absolutely and that's totally valid absolutely absolutely me i prefer to buy things on etsy you know for that very reason i would rather go and pay a little bit more uh, perhaps i'm in a fortunate position because of my age and yeah, and anyway and that's not going to privilege um but um you know i can do so i don't have to buy everything crap and dull and and that's where this may go and it absolutely certainly will go because the, the you know you think of the patrons of ours like <laughs> my patron gavin gavin critchley who pays me to do things you know so i feel like a tiny stunted michelangelo a uh, a poor man's um beethoven not that i do art or music and don't be offended you know i'm just talking so yeah so ai is not going to go away the, artisans will continue to exist but the mass produced stuff will be ai now uh, you may you may have already realized what i'm saying now and uh, those two pieces the listeners and uh, haunted house by virginia wolf it was my voice but it wasn't me saying it it was a clone it was an ai clone of my voice so not only i'm putting myself out of work with ai with cloning my voice and using chat gpt gpt to write things so i'm doing myself out of business and we're not quite there yet but it was astounding a bit posher than me i think normally but yeah so uh, i'm using this really to generate comments i i, I don't propose that I will be AIing all my stories from now on because I don't think we're quite there. But goodness knows, in a year we might be indistinguishable. Apparently, if you pay five hundred dollars a month to this company, they will create a voice that is indistinguishable from your own. But it's it's actually cheaper for me just to talk. So at this point, it isn't. Uh, there's no cost benefit, and I'm guessing a lot of people would just not listen, you know, to the channel. But I'm interested in your comments as always. So yeah, AI, the future, either AI art, AI writing, AI music, or in this case, AI storytelling, you know, because it's, 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 um, oh, you know, you just find the text of the story online, free with Gutenberg or somebody like that. You plug it into this, you pays your money, and out comes the story in the dulcet tones of uh so you could uh i maybe sell the rights to my ai voice that might be the way forward you know uh maybe sell the rights and people can um <laughs> have me tell them absolutely individualized bedtime stories or daytime stories or whatever kind of stories yeah okay yes i'm sure you will all be very angry at this i guess i'm a futurist really but i'm also a nostalgist as well because i love the past and i love the future isn't that amazing? And I'm pretty keen on the present. I, I, this is no place to talk about the puppies, such wonderful little expressions of natural life created by nature. And of course, actually, that prompts me to say that this debate between craft and nature is ancient. It goes right back to the, to the, uh, the Greek philosophers and probably even further back, but certainly the Romantic movement. And, there's, and, and even in writing the pantsers versus the plotters, you know, there are people who've, uh, and I'm a big follower of Carl Jung, a big believer in Carl Jung. I go to a Jungian therapist, blah, blah, blah. And he's all about like things arising from the unconscious, the natural wellspring, wellspring of creativity. The, the natural world, the same one that makes the plants grow and the puppies be born. And I've got a um, Christmas cactus, which Sheila nearly killed that i hope she's not listening but she did it she put it in a very dark room at the front and it half died and i thought and she was going to throw it out i said no 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 this is 15 years old we haven't had it since a baby but um i put it in the kitchen so it's got light and i talk to it and i encourage it and it's sprouting and we've got a little orange tree which is a similar thing and it's now got lovely blossom on so um, the sign of spring we hope but well we know in fact so I think what we're saying is, you know, one school says only the natural is good. Things arise from nature, God, divinity, process, natural process. Yeah. And the other one says, no, 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 the craft of the human brain, which plots and creates and is technological. But the truth is, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Um, I don't know if you ever remember, there was a program which I loved called, it was called Time Slip in the 1970s, and there was this um, young boy in a very British 1970s weird 
science fiction, which was the age of weird science fiction, of course. And we could even talk about hauntology there, the nostalgia for futures that never happened, which is another tremendously interesting concept. But I think we've had enough digressions for this particular episode. And um, so he, there's this spaceman came, or was he a spaceman? But he was organic. His spacecraft was made of plants. And one of the things that they, I remember reading that um, they're using AI to design um, te- um, bridges and cars. And it comes up with the most organic looking shapes that we could never have worked out. So, in summary, there is a debate between which is best, the natural or the artificial. And you could fall on either camp. I like both, actually. I, you know, I like both. Uh, I, think, I think there's a scope for both. That's my view. Oh, but I don't think you can turn your back on it and go, this isn't going to happen. Look what happened to the Luddites. They were right, actually. It was stealing their jobs. It did impoverish them, but there was no going back. Um, and, of course, this will be led by money and profit, and it will be, you know, it'll be taken out of our hands. And you may say, fight, fight, fight against that. Live in a hut. Make your own shoes. And, and, and many of you may do that. Um, some of you may do that. I, I'm... I'm I'm open to the idea, but I would I would miss the internet really. Um, I think that's it, really, isn't it? Modern versus no, not modern. Natural versus artificial. The romantic. Are you a Wordsworthian? Are you finding the huge and mighty forms that do not move? They do not live like living men. They moved slowly through um, my days and were troubled to my dreams. Something I've misquoted them, but it's pretty good. I'm very moved by that. And I say all the Jungian idea about the bubbling up of natural goddess, human god, or oh god, you want to say god, I'm, 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 I'm up with that as well. Um, or is it just human? But then, of course, what we forget is we are part of nature. So that I, and I am going to digress again, slightly. Um, so when people talk about invasive species, I remember you know, here, sycamore trees, invasive species, get rid of them, burn them down, pull them out. Well, they've been here since the Romans. Rabbits, same thing, invasive, get rid of them. Rhododendrons, get rid of rhododendrons. Well, it, then it turned, because they come from the Himalayas, they like it here because it's wet and acidic. And, you know, they like it. It's like the Himalayas. And it turns out, and so we, you know, rip them up. Grey squirrels, shoot them, you know. And I'm like, you know, they've come here, in fact, they found seeds from, uh, you know, rhododendrons in the soil of Britain from the post-Ice Age period. Apparently they died out or something. Or the interglacial, I don't know. I obviously I only vaguely remember things. But, um, yeah, so there we are. So they were here, then they went and they come again. But my point is, if we say, oh, rabbits got to this island by, or rats got to this island by hitching a lift um, on a boat, well, they might have done on a log. So if they get there by a log, that's natural and okay. If they come by a boat, that's not natural because we have been part of it. But that is only if you take us out of nature. And I think that is part of our disenchantment. I was talking about this, our disillusionment. We feel we're apart from the, from the world. Mary Midgley, um, the philosopher, was taking odds with Sartre, you know, the existentialists and Camus and people like this. We're all, and somebody can, you know, I, my, my, I play fast and loose with facts, right? I'm vaguely right, but I'm not completely right. So somebody will comment and I may agree or disagree with them in the comments. But she was Mary Midgley, right? She was saying, Camus and all these exits, we are alone in a hostile universe. We are flung like riders on the storm. Okay, that's a ju- the doors. But, um, and she says, well, no, we're at home. Where else? Where else are we going to be at home? Oh, somebody's rung our bell. And that is a sign for me to finish. Okay, bye-bye. I came back because um, it was very exciting. It was the postman. And Sheila got various parcels. I don't know what they are. But every day. I think her plan is to fill the house so we can't move around with um, crystals, maybe, as far as I can tell. Anyway, a couple of things came. One for me, that was good, so I couldn't really complain too much. It was a very charming, nice young postman. Royal Mail in the red. Now, I'm, I'm, so I'm nostalgic enough to think, you know what, I like the Royal Mail. I like all the red post boxes with E2R. It's going to have C3R's. 
Sounds like C-3PO, to be fair, but it's not. C-3R on. I like all that. I like the coins. With, and I actually think they're going to put Charles III on them, where there's, technically they should put the Latin. Carolus, I would have preferred that. I also, these days, as I've got older, like um, pounds and stones and pints and inches and yards. I could go on, but it would become quite tedious. Furlongs, chains, no, shut up. Fathoms, stop it. And then, um, but I like centigrade rather than Fahrenheit. Now, when I was a little boy at school, we were taught Fahrenheit, and then centigrade came in, and at some point I lose, I don't remember exactly when, I wasn't probably paying attention. It all became centigrade. Now, centigrade to me seems Celsius, same thing. Seems, you know, zero, freezing, zero. Boiling, 100. Now, that makes sense to me. Rather than Fahrenheit, like 15 degrees is freezing and who knows what's boiling. And like today, it's uh, five degrees here centigrade, relatively cold, um, but not freezing. And I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It's like 40 odd. Anyway, anyway, I digress. So what came through for me, or three things, was one from my, a, a postcard from my friend Nicholas in Zagreb. He's, he's working, he's been working there for a bit, working, uh, he's a management consultant, he's advising. I said, what exactly do you do? He says, well, he's working for a Croatian baker, big, you know, they go in there, get paid a ton of money. Croatian bakers, and basically says, well, you know, we make it so they can sell 15, 15 pasties in this time they would have sold 10. I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, you know, I work for the National Health Service in the UK. I said, what about making us more efficient? He said, well, listen, really, we'd make it so you could see 20 patients in a time that you could um, previously seen 10. But that wouldn't be good. No, because we're on our knees anyway. And there's no benefit. You sell 15 pasties, you make more money. You see 20 patients, it just costs you more. So it doesn't work like that anyway. So I'm in favour of the NHS, by the way, as well, and the Royal Mail and all these institutions. I guess I, be I do believe in society. I do. And some of you will get the reference. And the other things that came out, which will also illuminate things, one is The Spectator. So The Spectator is a famously right-wing magazine. But it is um, it, not all, actually. The arts, the arts and reviews just aren't. And it's really well written. I tried reading The New Statesman, but it was just so po-faced and um, new puritanical. I didn't like it. But I did watch some YouTube videos from The New Statesman, and I like people like, I'm going to offend people, I like Mick Lynch and people like that. He talks well. So am I a dangerous right-winger or am I a dangerous left-winger? You, you make it. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm just me. And then I've got Moof Magazine. So Moof Magazine is a, uh, it's a, it's a, what is it? It's a magazine about um, sort of weird music, 11th -ish issue, and it's got weird stuff in the kind of avant-garde, off the rails, uh, not off the rails, but out of the way music. Because you know I, I like things like Hartwood Institute and uh, some of this stuff, countercultural stuff. It looks very 1970s, to be fair. So I'm really looking forward to that. Griff Reese, psyched to meet you. So it looks really good, so it's very exciting, all of that. So I just had to come tell you why I've run off at the bell and what happened. And then today I've got, I'm going puppy sitting again later today, but I'm, I've got to um, write some articles on my website. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so sorry about the synthesized, synthesized, synthesized voice at the beginning, but it was interesting, wasn't it? Very interesting. Probably wouldn't put you to sleep, or maybe it would. Who knows? Let me know in your comments. What, in the comments, what you think? Everybody dies, don't they? Everybody so dies. Come back, don't they? Isn't that Everybody so? You tried to get into the locked drawer today, didn't you? you 